Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and a recommendation today from Pete who wrote to us to say that this puzzle appeared on Discord and he spent three hours over it and enjoyed every second, which is a brilliant recommendation if if a little frightening, to be honest. Um, so do remember that you can get to Discord on the links under the video in the description field, along with our Patreon site where we provide extra content and monthly puzzle hunts and along with all of our apps and Sven Sudoku pad, the uh, merchandise and everything to connect it with the channel. But the first link will be to this puzzle. It's by Bill Murphy, um, an Australian who's been a friend of the channel for a long time. Uh, we really like Bill. His puzzles are normally very entertaining, not normally incredibly hard. So I'm a bit nervous that he's, he's gone into new territory with this irregular Sudoku. Now, the rules can be very simply stated. Um, they're not normal Sudoku rules apply because we don't have three by three square boxes. But they are that each row, column, region and cage contains the digits from one to nine. So every row has the digits from one to nine, every column every marked region with the lines around it and every cage which we've also colored gray uh, so that is the rules um, that's a bit like a window could do give it a try on the link under the video Ho hopefully you'll see from the video length it doesn't take me three hours but if it does it does and uh, let's get cracking so what can we do we need to find some digit that is restricted somewhere. So a nine in this region is a bit difficult. I'm looking at nines because there's three of them given, which is the most of any digit. And then some of them are pointing at this region. Now, this one is ruling out those cells. This one is ruling out that. This one is also ruling out that cell. So, I don't know, I'm not sure. Maybe I will pencil mark that. And the nines are symmetrical over here, so the same's true in box, well, box number, whatever that is. Um, and that's not all that helpful. But these shapes and, re and, and cages, they matter. Ah, oh, look, look, we've got, look at one in this, cage this cage needs a one where's it going to get it it's not going to get it in this column because of that <clears throat> this one is in a region that covers all of those cells so if you can't put a one in any of those places in this cage it's got to be there so that's like a weird given but it's not easy to see and does that do anything else for ones Oh, sorry about the airplanes. I think they're practicing for the air show, which is annoying. Um, now, here's a thing about window coup, which is what we call it with these four shapes in the grid. They, these regions that are the, the, the cages are forming, they create some extra regions, and I'm going to color those. So if you look at rows two, three, and four, they, by definition, contain three sets of the digits one to nine. But each of the two cages in those in that area individually contains each of the digits from one to nine, again by rule. So what's left after you take them out is nine cells that must be the third set of one to nine. So I'm gonna color them. Yellow is a set of one to nine. Green, similarly, is a set of one to nine. And blue here and purple. So each of those are a set of one to nine, just by elimination, effectively. It's a sort of form of set theory or the law of leftovers, but a relatively simple one, thank goodness. Now, the, the slightly more complicated set is what's left in white. Given that the greys are four sets of one to nine, and each of the other colours is a set of one to nine, and the puzzle obviously has nine sets of one to nine, the whites are also a set of one to nine. Now, I don't know if this helps. Yes, what I was looking at is that yellow needs a one, but unfortunately, I can't rule out any of those positions. So it, it wasn't that exciting in the end anyway. Uh, 
Oh, the symmetry is interesting. I think this may be a fully symmetrical puzzle. Look at threes looking at this cage. Where does three go in this cage? It's exactly the same as with ones. It goes in there. Because that three in this region has all of those cut off. Um, right, how about four in this region? Oops, sorry. This region now. Where does four go? That four is cutting off all of those by being in that cage. So four is in one of those two cells. Now I'm marking, and I'll try and keep my markings within a region if I can. Now, does that mean, yes, it's the same for two up here. Two's in one of those two. Ah, here's a thought about this puzzle in particular, not about Windoku in general, but look at the perimeter. Yeah, the perimeter rows and columns. Now, they're not quite four sets of the digits one to nine. Each row or column on the perimeter is. But if you added up all, well, if you counted up all of those digits, you wouldn't get four sets because you would have to avoid double counting the four corners. And that's why these regions extend. There are only four regions involved in these perimeters and they extend into those cells. And the way that they manage to be a set of one to nine without double counting the corners is by repeating the corners on these inside corners. So that group of cells are the same digits as this group of cells, which is an interesting relationship. It's not one I can use yet, but it might be helpful later. So I'm going to try and remember it. I don't think I can mark it. But I need to find out something else about the puzzle because that's just speculation. Ah, one in this region. Yes, one can't be there or there and it can't be in this cage either. So one of these two is a one. And over here that role is played by three, which can't be in any of those cells or that one. So three is in one of those two. Now, if it's in grey there, the blue three is here. If it's in blue there, the grey three is somewhere here. So it doesn't get anything done. Is it something about shapes? Oh, okay. Oh, look, this is lovely. This cell and this shape. That's what I'm going to look at next. So where does this cell go in this shape? Oh my goodness, there's only one place. It can't be in this cage because it's already, this cell digit is already in that cage. It can't be in this row because it's already in that row. So it's got to be this one. That is a five. And down here, six. This must be a six because there's nothing else it can be. It sees all of those cells. So we're going to need a five and a six in the corner based on what we did earlier. But I don't know where they go, except that the five doesn't go here and the six doesn't go here. Three, four, six. This is two, seven or eight. Oh, no, it's not two because we've got a two, but there's a pencil mark there. That's seven or eight. This one, five, two, one, three, nine, six and can't be four. That's seven or eight. Could they be the same? Actually, no. For the reason, oh my goodness, there go the airplanes. Got more than one Maverick here today. Got the whole gang of Top Gun. Right, um, seven and eight do not go there. Sorry, they are not the same. Now, the reason I know that is because we've worked out that these four cells appear in the corners of the grid. Now, for the same digit to appear there, it would have to appear in opposite corners of the grid, and one of them would clash with that seven, and one of them would clash with that eight. So these are, one of them is a seven, and one of them is an eight. And whatever digit this is appears in one of, oh no, it could be an eight and appearing there. I was gonna say it appears in one of those two cells, but I don't know that. 
But this may be how we have to make progress, is finding cells that look at whole areas. I nearly said, if they're not eight, eight's in one of those two, which would be really interesting because it would fix that, but actually eight can still be there, so I don't know this. Oh, in fact, there is an eight in one of those two cells because this cage needs one. This cage needs one as well, so it's tempting to think that it's there, but that's not a conclusion. Ah, oh, three now is forced out of these cells. So it's in one of these four, and that in turn means it's not in these cells in column one. So three in this region can't be in the top row anymore, and it can't be there. So it's in one of those cells. That means in column one, it's not in one of those cells. So in this region, it now has to be in one of those two. And then in this region, it's in one of, no, those two, because it's kind of pushed around there. And one is the same deal. One is in one of those four, so it's not in those four. So it's in one of those two. And then it's gonna be in one of these two in column one. Can I, maybe I can do this. No, it doesn't work the same with eight. Because eight, yeah, I, c I can keep out, I can see that eight's not in those cells, but I can't necessarily say it's in those because it could be there. Similarly, up here, eight could be in, oh no, this is good actually. <laughs> oh, that's funny, it works slightly differently. That eight says none of those are eight. So the eight in column nine is in one of those. And they're all in the same shape with that. So that can't be eight anymore, that's seven. And that works here. Those aren't seven, so one of those is, so that's now eight. And now, five, six, seven, and eight are the corners. So up here we have five, six, or eight. Down here we have five, six, or seven, but this corner can't be a six. This top one can't be a five. I mean, I'm making some good deductions, but I'm not really getting anywhere. I've got, I suppose I've got some digits in the grid. I shouldn't moan too much, but it's weird, this puzzle. Can I use these blue and purple areas, which have given digits in a bit better? Nine in blue has to either be there or there. almost feels helpful but not quite ah the law of leftovers yes column two right these five digits are common to both column two and this region they're in that means the other four digits have to be identical so these four digits are the same as these four and are one five eight and something else well the five has to be here Yes, the other way of looking at that is just by asking, where does five go here? I didn't manage to ask that question, but I got there a different way. Now, one of these two has to be eight, and the other one is that. Ah, and that can't be blue, because we're only allowed one of each digit in blue. So those two are the same. So let's make them red. Um, I think that's right. Yeah, that is right. That is right. Those two are the same, and this is eight. One, five, eight, and red. This is eight. Yes. Okay. And we need an eight, obviously, somewhere in that cage. We need a seven in one of those two cells. I've only just noticed that's analogous to the eight down here. We need a seven in one of these three as well. Now that's slightly interesting from the odd point of view that seven must be in one of those two cells and therefore seven is ruled out of those three which see them both. They're in the same region as that one down there. So seven can't be in those or that anymore. I, I have literally no idea how to mark that but I find it interesting. Now what is red? It sees five, two, eight, one, seven, and three. 
here it doesn't see anything else. So it's four, six, or nine. Oh, sorry, I'm putting that in the wrong cell. Red is four, six, or nine. <clears throat> and where does it appear in this cage? Sorry. It appears in one of those cells, and clearly it's not one. So either that is a red four or six, or nine is red. Three, four, nine, six, eight in this region has become only in one possible cell. Oh, that's simple. So that's not eight. Oh, I think this is huge. Seven in this region is the symmetrical equivalent. So seven is there. That's not seven. Now, the interesting thing is about what I was saying about red. Whichever red cell, whichever of these is, sorry, whatever number red is, it's in one of those cells and it can't be one or seven. So red is nine. Okay, and I can unread them. And they go with that nine and we're done with nines there. Now, there must be a symmetrical play on that. Uh, let's start, okay, put eight in here. What is the equivalent cell? This one. Where does that go? Yes, okay, the, the cells outside this region, three, seven, six, and let's make it red down there. So these are three, seven, six, and red, and the six goes here. Red is a purple cell, so that can't be red, so that one's red. Seven goes there, and whatever red is, is three, eight, or nine but it can't be three or eight according to this cell, so it's nine. And I think we have probably finished all the nines in the grid now. Oh no, we've got two more to do. Oh, don't say I can't do them. Let's remove the nines from those candidate cells. I've got an X-wing on nines out the sides here. Bother. <clears throat> But I've got more cells filled in than I had before. This can't be seven. So seven's definitely one of those. This is in fact two or six. We've got two, four and six to put in the column generally. Down up, up this column, let's keep the equivalent going. Two, four and five, that one can't be two. In fact, this cage has now got nine, seven, one, five, two in it. Eight is in one of those cells. Or may I don't know, I've got so many things I could concentrate on. Let's have a look at purple. Six, seven, eight, nine, three. One of these is a one. And the other is the missing digit from two, four, or five. Don't know how to work that either. Right, these regions are being very helpful suddenly. So let's maybe keep working them a bit. If I can. One, seven, three, six, eight, nine here. No, I don't know what to do. This is three or four. How about that? This one is one or two. Three has to appear in one of these cells in this cage or in this column, however you look at that. Um, ah, and they both see this cell, which can't be a three, which is a bit weird. That one's in the same region, that one's in the same row. That doesn't actually help. I don't... And three could be there, but now it can also be in those. This is three, seven, four, six. That is three, four... Oh, hang on. This can't be a seven because it's in the cage and it can't be a six because it's in the row. So that's a three, four pair. This is a six, seven pair. They're in the same region as this. So that's a two. That's quite nice. This is now a one, four pair. I Yes, I can write them in because of that four. And I must be able to do the symmetrical thing over the other side. So this must be a one or a two, five, nine, three, six, four, seven, and eight in the cage. It's sometimes so difficult to look within the region boundaries and the cage boundaries at the same thing. So four here, they don't have a four. This is 
two and three in the cage. There we go. So that's not a two and that's not a four. Let's remove those markings. Um, the cages are beginning to get close to done. Maybe not this one. Now, let's have a look at blue again. Nine, seven, eight, five, one, ah, and a four, six pair. So that's a three and that's a two. And that gives us three at the bottom. So we can do the same over here. We've got a two, five pair in purple. So that's a one. That's a four, and we get a one at the top. Now, in the white cells, we have one, nine, three. The corners are going to be five, six, seven, eight. Oh, well, obviously, these are going to be a two, four pair. Ah, it's brilliant. Oh, this is a four. That's a two. So it doesn't really help place the green two. Oh, look, I've got a two down here looking at a five. So that's a two. I've got a four up here looking at a six. So that's a four. Now that is a seven. That's a six in the corner. That's an eight in the corner and a five in the corner. And that's all the corners done. Now this shape, three, one, two, four, six, eight. This is a seven, five, nine triple. We can fill them in. Eight, nine, six, seven, five. That is a naked one. It sees two, three, and four in the row. That's two or three, and that's three or four. So I can't quite finish those. Eight, five, nine, six, seven. It's going to be the same situation down here. I get a three there, and a one, two, four triple that I can't finish. Six, eight, nine up here. So nine, eight, six. They're done. That fixes the five. 8, the 7 here fixes 6, 7. <coughs> now, how about this shape yet again? Now, I'll tell you what, those 5 cells are missing 1, 2, 3, 4. So those 4 cells in the column are 1, 2, 3, 4. I can fill in 4 there, 2 here. Now, I've got a 1, 5, 7 triple here. They just go in. Hurrah. Whatever these are, 3, 6, 8, they must go in. In the opposite order there we go that's fixed the two four three triple this is a lovely puzzle i mean it's so elegantly simple and clever and then i've just got the central column to finish off and i'm feeling quite pleased with that i have to say eight there six here so not three hours <laughs> unbelievably only just over 20 minutes um that's convoluted that feels like my brain's had a bit of a wrestling work out there. It's a very clever puzzle. It is not some nonsense from me. Bill is far too self-deprecating. Um, it is a very good puzzle. Very interesting. There's a lot of moves there. Uh, thank you, Pete, for recommending it. Um, and it was enjoyable. That's a really good one. So, as always, thank you for watching on the channel. And uh, well done if you solved that in a handy time. It's not easy. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.